Mr. McGough? Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscomb? Mr. Joyce? Here. And Mrs. Evans? Here. Notice is hereby given that Scranton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 23rd, 2013 at 5.45 p.m. in Council Chambers, Second Floor Municipal Building, 340 North Washington Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. The purpose of said public hearing is to hear testimony and discuss the following. File of Council number 11 of 2013. Amending file of the council number 74, 1993, as amended, entitled The Zoning Ordinance for the City of Scranton, by repealing section 516 entitled Flood Prone Areas and enacting section 516 entitled Flood Plain Management Regulations. We have uh, no one who has signed the speaker's sheet. Is there anyone who would like to address council? Members of council, Don Ping, I'm the city planner. Uh, the ordinance you have before you tonight is an amendment to our zoning ordinance that deals with the section on floodplain regulations. Uh, this came about from FEMA, asked us to update our regulations to stay current with their current federal regulations. Uh, there really isn't a whole lot of difference, be the regulations themselves between what's in our ordinance now and what's in here, other than there's a lot more in the way of explanation, definitions, uh, more specific regulations, but the, the core things are, are basically the same. Uh, like I said, it's, it's a requirement of theirs. The one change, we have a new flood zone, uh, flood zone A99, which wasn't, wasn't even thought of when our ordinance was passed in 93. So that's one of the reasons why we needed to update it also, and that's for the areas that are protected by the levees which we didn't have, obviously, in 93, the last time we did our zoning ordinance. Uh, but other than that, basically, there's really not a lot of difference, just a, much more in the way of explanation. We appreciate very much the fact that you attended this public hearing, Mr. King, and provided that explanation for council and the public. Well, you're more than welcome. Questions? No. Thank, Thank you. you again. Thank Is you. there anyone else who cares to address council? My name Hello. is Victorine. What is it? I'm sorry. My name is Victorine. And your last name? Bidwell. Thank you. Um, well, I, I'm, this is my first time coming here, so I'm nervous. Okay. Um, I am a person that goes to screen counseling, you know, for our, our mental health. Um, if I could interrupt, I'm so sorry, Ms. Bidwell. This is not the regularly scheduled council meeting. This is a public hearing oh, on, I a, didn't know that. on a specific change to the zoning ordinance only. So do, does your issue involve the zoning ordinance change? Uh, it was like having starting a community garden, you know, for like the, you know, homeless, you know, food kitchens. Okay, things you know, like if, that. if you can um, wait until we begin our regular meeting, which should be momentarily, oh. then you can speak during the council meeting. Okay, I am so sorry. Oh, no, that's no problem at all. Don't you worry. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? 
This public hearing is adjourned. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Andrew S. Quinn Esquire, beloved husband, son, father, brother of Monsignor Joseph G. Quinn, nephew, uncle, and great uncle, Francis Buttiglieri Butler Gervasi, loving wife, mother of our good friend Dave Gervasi, Scranton firefighter, and wife Karen, grandmother of our friends Bob Seta, Scranton firefighter, Maria Costanzo, Angela Duffy, and one of my favorite students, Alyssa, great-grandmother, sister, and aunt, all victims of the killer tornadoes in Moore, Oklahoma, and their dear families and friends who suffer their loss. Roll call, please. Here. Here. Mr. Loscom. Here. Mr. Joyce. Here. Mrs. Evans. Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held April 23rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluations received April 12th and April 17th of 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, audit status from Robert Rossi and Company received May 16th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held May 22nd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? The Lackawanna River Corridor Association will conduct its annual River Fest on Saturday, June 1st, 2013, including a canoe-a-thon, kayak excursions, a regatta, and a duck-a-thon. For additional information, call 570-347-6311 or go to www.lrca.org. Don't miss this fun-filled family event. Finally, I wish to congratulate the winners of Tuesday's primary election and recognize all the candidates who were willing to give their time and best efforts to the betterment of their communities. And that's it. And we'll go to fourth order citizens participation. Uh, our First speaker tonight is Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Uh, Good evening. Well, I want to start off by saying my Good thoughts evening. and prayers go out to the Gervasi family and the loss of their dear mother. I just heard that Tuesday and I felt so bad. My thoughts and prayers are with the, the whole family. Uh, I too want to congratulate all the winners on uh, Tuesday, and maybe this will this will be the start to turn our city around, hopefully. And uh, I wish them all the best of luck. Uh, I don't know much else tonight, but uh, the other day I spoke to a high-level police official and told me a couple of disturbing things. Last week, the one night 
there was one police officer in all of Southside. That's how depleted our police force is right now. And he, this person told me if there was a domestic or a violent crime committed, this police officer would have been on his or her own until help arrived. And that's a darn shame. And, and this is all because of our mayor. The way he's depleted our police force, forced a lot of them out, all good cops out of the city. For an example, we have one that's the, the police chief from Blakely now, that was a police officer here. Others went to the state police. And that's all because of Chris Doherty. They all wanted to stay here, but they were forced out. And uh, hopefully with a new mayor, that will change. And I, I feel safe in saying I think Mr. Courtright will do that. But it's a darn shame where we have one police officer to cover one section of the city. And it's been like that in the past. It's been like that for years. And it's a darn shame. Uh, that's all I have to say right now. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bidwell, yes. if you would come up, please. Hello. Hello again. Hello. Okay. I I I'm a per patient with the Scranton counseling. Um, I want to suggest to the city that if there was a way possibly that the people here in Scranton could have a community garden that they could either keep for themselves, that they could donate to the churches, they could uh, go to the farmer's market or something like that. And um, where would be a good place that we could start something and what do I need? Well, I know that currently there is a community garden in West Scranton. I think it's um, largely overseen by the West Scranton Neighborhood Crime Watch organization. And from what I hear, it's been very successful. Um, I think there may also be something similar um, in Southside. Uh, where uh, I think they might coordinate with a very small farmer's market. So if you were interested in starting something like that in another portion of the city, another area, I should yeah, say. Yeah, like here in the city. I think what you would need to do is locate uh, a city-owned abandoned lot and uh, then I think you would need to speak with the administration, specifically Mayor Doherty, once you've located the appropriate property. And again, it should be city owned, not a property that, for example, it may be um, a vacant property because a home may have been torn down previously, but it can still be owned by a bank or the original property owner. So okay. you have to determine this carefully, that it is indeed a city-owned property. Okay. And then, as I said, speak with the mayor about your intentions. And I think if you have a, a group of people there uh, is. with talk. you who are very interested in pursuing this, I, I think it can be done. OK, that would be great. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That concludes our sign-in sheet. Do we have anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, Good evening. resident. Um, on 7A and B, did you get any kind of answer on our uh, Sergeant Duffy monument? Oh, um, no, we didn't. But I do have here a copy of the letter that was sent 
I can give it to you. Oh, I no, I uh, totally a trust. A letter that. was sent on May 17th to mm -hmm. Mayor Doherty and Mr. Dewar uh, regarding the Colonel Frank J. Duffy monument, and we haven't received a response it's, yet. Is it Colonel not, Duffy or? Pardon? Was it Colonel Duffy or? Sergeant Duffy, I'm not sure. Well, but. according to the letter, it says Colonel Frank uh -huh. J. Duffy. Um, again, this was just sent last Friday. Um, this week, of course, City Hall had a day off on primary election day. Mm -hmm. So we've not received a response yet. Okay. Okay, the only concern there is if it gets passed tonight, then they don't have to answer on it for any negative things that may happen to I I'm, I trust that it, it probably will be okay it'll it'll get moved and e even if they uh, they don't have the land there they could put it up at Mayog Park somewhere or something mm -hmm. uh, but it should be preserved and it's a huge bronze uh, and uh, granite uh, monument so it's it's probably uh, cost you quite a pretty penny to you know uh, replace it and uh, for the candidates uh, I've saved quite a few signs so if anybody wants to see me at the end of the uh, council I could hand them back to you or I have several so. uh, and on the food trucks uh, it's not on tonight uh, that I can see but uh, please Keep it at 100 feet, because anything more is just going to make it to a point where it'll just be a constant argument, sore spot. So uh, one person will object, and the other person will counter-object, and, and it'll go back and forth for years. But uh, I mean, these people were left to come in here, and once you do that, you, you kind of, the horse is out of the barn, so to speak. So. You can limit it somewhat, but it's kind of uh, not right to uh, uh, put a huge limitation on it. And a few weeks ago, Mrs. Evans, you mentioned about Scranton U fire alarms, and they were mostly cooking where somebody cooked. I have a fire alarm very close to my kitchen stove because that's probably where a fire would start uh, in most houses. and. You know, a lot of times I have to unplug the battery in order to cook, but that's the safest place to have it. And I was wondering if full crews of firemen showed up to those alarms where we possibly have rolling brownouts and, and uh, we have truck after truck after truck full of firemen and, uh, showing up at these because this alarm went off. Uh, it's um, been a wonder of mine. Would Jack know Mr. that? Maybe? Yeah, Mr. Loscom, do you I, know the answer? I'm sorry, I missed I, part of it. Uh, I think during January and February, uh, Janet mentioned at least a dozen false alarms or cooking fire where you make too much smoke and the alarm sure. sounds off. And they probably are all interconnected. So I was wondering if we didn't have full fire. Uh, fighting crews showing up in most Could cases he? yes uh, yeah yeah so uh, and in some cases uh, there's there's arrangements where one company would respond mm -hmm. uh, but it depends on on the area well, I was wondering if we could possibly get something going where the uh, university verifies due to the fact that uh, and and the U pays a few dollars in pilot. Uh, other universities don't pay anything, and they have dormitories too. If they could get somebody to verify that it's an actual problem or a fire started, uh, I believe they've to, they've tried that. Yeah. But the the fact the, the big factor is if it is a real fire, there's yeah. a lot of valuable time lost. Yeah, you know, and, and that's a consideration. Seconds count. Well, that's another good argument for fees as opposed to taxes. <laughs> you know, one more good argument. And uh, 
Okay, uh, I've kind of run out of things. It's, a, it's an off week, but uh, the golden parrot goes to the people. Once again, my uh, campaign signs were vandalized and some were swiped. And, uh, you know, it, it makes it that I have to scratch my head whether I want to support people that potentially took them. You know, if, if, if their man won, I have to sit and think about it now, you know, because I'm thinking, am I helping the, the person that engaged in actually criminal activity? And it's only a misdemeanor and, and, and so forth, but it's, it's wrong. And it really tees me off. So whoever wanted to run as a candidate and slant the elections and uh, mess things up and potentially put the election into the wrong hands of the wrong people. Or people that couldn't do as good of a job as others, they get the bok, bok, bok. Thank you and have Thank a good you. night. Thank you. Is there anyone Thank you. else? I don't really have anything prepared. But I think it's going to be a big loss to the city of Scranton. Um, bef before you begin, I'm sorry, could you state your name? Teresa Snyder. Okay. I think it's going to be a big loss to the city of Scranton, Mayor Doherty, because he has a large family and he can hit on areas of which not many people can do. He's both involved with the faith and also the community in general. I think it'll be a big loss for us. I think that the incumbent perhaps will probably do a good job. But the thing of the matter is, is like I, I've seen where Chris Doherty did a lot of good for the city of Scranton. I think it's going to be a big loss. I think he took on a job of which most people would not really want to take on because there was so much involved. Not only that on the most personal and the most public level, but the thing is, is I think he conducted himself in the most professional way. Okay, I think that he probably did as much as he possibly could. And like as he concedes or else perhaps he pursues, you never know. You never know what's going to happen in the city of Scranton. That's one thing. You never know. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the thing I have here today is that I'd like the council to pass um, only a budget that lasts long enough for the incumbents to take office on co in council and in the mayor's office. Because we've, we've listened to rhetoric, and, and this isn't a shot at anyone in general, but everybody's talking about not raising taxes and not doing all these other things. And I just think that we should give them the opportunity to take these positions and do the things that they promised the taxpayers they were going to do. Now, I'm going to say this in regards to you, Mr. Joyce. Yes. You know, I may have not agreed with counsel at all times, but in your particular instance, I think that the budget problems in this city are so vast, and this isn't a shot at the rest of counsel, that not one person is going to be able to manage pulling that budget apart and finding solutions. It's just not going to happen. And I think that you, sir, took a lot of the heat for prior things that had happened in the city. Now, I don't know what all the numbers were because I wasn't here locally when I only came, cast my vote. I haven't been in the city for a couple days. But I, I think that I was told you came short a little bit. I don't know, 100 or 200 votes, but I'm not sure if that's factual or not either. But, you know, I have a lot of things I'd like to say about this prior election because I think it's important for the residents someday to understand what's taking place. And i just like this council to really seriously consider just putting a budget together long enough for the next elected officials of this city to come in and do the things they campaigned on because rhetoric is very simple, but reality sometimes is very hard. And at this time, I'm going to reserve any comments on the election, but I just think that uh, that's, the, that's the proper thing to do. That's my opinion. And, uh, and I just hope you'd really seriously consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Madam President, if I could comment on that? Yes. First of all, it would be a violation of the Home Rule Charter in order for to pass such a budget. Uh, it couldn't be done legally. It would be an illegal budget. Um, and that would mean that the new council would have to come in and the new mayor uh, and draft an amendment. I mean, I don't know if Mr. Morgan means just draft a budget for one week um, or if he means draft a budget for an entire year, but then the new council could come in and make amendments to it. Um, there's precedent for that. Uh, Judge Mazzoni ruled against council uh, when it amended the budget you know, the mayor's budget, uh, I, be I believe it was back in uh, 2009. Um, we spent, I think it was two days of trial, <coughs> submitted briefs, and Judge Mazzoni said that, in his opinion, the council could not make any amendments uh, to the budget. Uh, I did not agree with his, op his opinion. Um, I thought an appeal maybe should have been taken, but council decided not to take an appeal. Unfortunately, that's the law of Lackawanna County right now, <clears throat> and it would be impossible, and it would be an illegal budget not to tell council not even to consider it. Thank you. And Ms. Schumacher? Yes. Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, good, good evening. evening. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank everybody who uh, came out and voted in general, and specifically those who came out and voted for me for the county study commission. I appreciate each and every vote. Uh, now, we're getting close to the half year mark, and Mr. Joyce, I'm wondering if you could get together with the new bud, uh, BA and give us a status report uh, as of the, the midterm and where it looks as though we're going to end. Uh, for instance, one of the things, I think we've given up on the, the police headquarters as a storage uh, area for cars. I know money was included in the budget for that, so things yes. of that nature. Um, and then uh, move, moving down to the ice box, there was six, I know there's $600,000 in the budget for the ice box uh, sale. And you know, that extends far beyond just getting that $600,000. We're missing out on the property taxes since that sale has not been consummated. And as a matter of fact, the Turkey Hill that was just built is now paying taxes only on the improvements because there is a land lease. And that's just wrong. It's wrong for other Turkey Hills with whom they compete, and it's certainly wrong for those of us who manage to pay our taxes. Uh, I think that's, that should be brought to the front burner, and I hope that uh, perhaps Attorney Hughes can give a report tonight on, on where that recovery stands. Because, as I say, it's important not just for the $600,000, but to get that on off the lease. Um, then um, I'd like to talk again about parking, parking head removals. Uh, Mr. Loscom, you were absent last week, but I talked about having gone by the, the parking heads that were removed at Penn and Linden, and there were cars parked in each and every spot. Uh, and again, coming down Mulberry Street tonight, there was only one of those spots that you, they were very fast, oh, it's the university, very fast to get the parking heads off those, but I've gone by numerous times and I just did the count tonight and almost always they are very close to completely filled. So I think whenever in the, in the future anybody wants to take a parking head away, I think we need to put the no parking signs up at the same time. And in the case of Mulberry Street, they've got to paint over or strip off. I don't know however they are, those zigzag white lines, because all we've done is lost revenue. We're not, we haven't increased safety at all as long as conti cars continue to park there and we have to zigzag around. Um, and then uh, talk about other revenues that I, I believe that we're, that we're missing. For instance, those clay, uh, the Clay Avenue properties, uh, uh, Mrs. Evans, I believe you spoke to them last week. I'm a little disappointed in NRC. I know I promised to give uh, information, but I knew I didn't have one property. I came into the, is it NRC or C, uh, the 
the tax collector for the delinquent taxes, whatever their acronym Northeast is. Northeast Revenue? Yeah. yeah. Um, when I got the, the one for the one property, she n noted to me that, oh, but we can't collect taxes on this because it's in bankruptcy. I mean, they're supposed to be professionals. I knew at that time that it had already been to court and somebody else had the deed and it was approved by a judge and it was in, um, in lieu of, they, the deed was given in, in lieu of foreclosure. So there again, we're missing out. There again, the taxes, the back taxes weren't collected before, uh, before they, were, they were given building permits. There's a property in, in my uh, neighborhood that sold for a pittance. I mean, you know, we've got the common level ratio that is what, somewhere now about five times, or yeah, I guess it would be five times the, the appraised value is the market value. <coughs> this person bought it for the appraised value, which is legal, but also got a permit and none of the, the the 2012 taxes aren't paid, the 2011 taxes aren't paid, the taxes for which uh, the prior, uh, city taxes for which the prior property owner uh, owed that are all supposed to be, or allowed to be charged. And I don't think we are even going after those. There is more slipping through our fingers and I have even more that I'll bring back next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Schumacher, if I have, uh, something for you regarding the the no parking signs we do agree with you that they should be so we have sent that letter and we're awaiting the response and mrs craig could we send a memo to nrs please regarding those uh, clay avenue properties because according to the documentation that we received um, Ms. Schumacher is accurate in that it was sold or transferred from one company to another. So it is not in bankruptcy and, well, apparently it's not. And I think they should probably be reviewing those properties for collection of the delinquent taxes. Thank you. Good afternoon, or good evening, Scranton City Council. Good, good evening. evening. Good evening. Congratulations to the winners and condolences to the losers. Uh, the, the weather had nothing to do with the low voter turnout in Scranton. Apathy for politicians along with disgust was the true reason why so people came out and voted. It really is, from talking to people. They just saw no use in coming out. That's a shame, but that's the majority of the people state that's why they didn't come out to vote on Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to read a letter to the, to, to the editor that I wrote last week and that I was criticized for from this uh, podium. City being left in dire straits, my fear is that the people who are seeking the positions of mayor and city council members do not realize how bad off Mayor Chris Doherty and the current Scranton City Council will leave the city financially. The city's payroll, retirement, and health insurance system must be reduced immediately. Otherwise, the city will not survive without another large tax increase, and that will not stop the bleeding. Wake up, Scranton, you're bankrupt, and nobody is, is rushing to your aid. If the city of Scranton filed for bankruptcy and a receiver was appointed, the residents would still have police, fire, and garbage pickup. It would not stop. The only people who would be stopped would be the seven elected officials of Scranton. That might actually be an improvement. The seven elected officials in the Pennsylvania Economy League are responsible for the mess I call Scranton insane government. I challenge any member of city council, the administration, Young Miller, or any other, or any other audience member to explain to the taxpayers what is not truthful or accurate in the above mentioned statement. Young Miller attempted last week but failed. He was nothing more than a cheerleader for failed city government. According to the data from the American Bankruptcy Institute, there were 41 municipality bankruptcies, about eight per year between 2007 and 2011, which is on par with the average in the United States since 1980. Experts predict that underfunded pension liabilities 
And stagnant tax revenue could cause an increased number of municipal bankruptcies. Scranton is the latest Pennsylvania city in serious financial trouble. Not my words, the words of expert, experts, which I do not believe that young Miller or anybody else on Scranton City Council qualifies as. All the bankrupt cities in the United States are required to provide police, fire, and garbage pickup. It's the law. Anybody who believes that all services would come to a halt because of bankruptcy, I have some swamp land for sale in Louisiana for a good price. Come see me after the meeting. Detroit, Michigan is a bankrupt city. They will have fire, police, DPW, Detroit Lions, Detroit Red Rings, Detroit Pistons, Pistons, and the Detroit Tigers. The community will continue to function with new leadership. I do not scare easy. Give me facts, not your novice opinions. Some cannot handle the truth, I can. Being a cheerleader is good at sporting events, but not at city government meetings when the city is bankrupt. My background, 20 years supervisory experience making the hard decisions, including life or death decisions. Seven years as a senior enlisted hostage negotiator, strategic air command. Two actual hostage situation. Also, Five years experience as first sergeant for a missile security squad and responsible for over 400 airmen, nuclear storage security supervisor, South Korea, Philippines, also non-commissioner officer in charge, NCOIC, for security escort and camper teams assigned to guard and protect 150 Minuteman missile sites located within the state of North, North Dakota, responsible for the health, safety, and welfare of 250 security specialists. U.S. Air Force still working to support the warfighters who defend and make sacrifices every day to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all foreign and domestic enemies, up to and including signing a contract that includes their life. I have sworn five oaths in my 34 years of service to my country and the citizens of the United States of America. Did I mention that I also had a temporary duty assignment to Presidential Security Support Squadron? providing security for the President and Vice President of the United States of America? How many people in this room have had lunch or supper with the President or Vice President or Secretary of Defense? I have, so I do not intimidate very easily. So when people come up here or elected officials say that we're not going to have fire or police or garbage because we're going to file bankruptcy, you're not convincing me. I don't believe it because the other bankrupt cities in the United States have fire, police, and garbage collection. It's not going to happen. Thank you. If I Thank could you. just respond to that quickly. Um, yes, in a sense, Mr. Jackowitz is correct. You'll still have some services, but not the ones you currently enjoy, because they would be cut in more than half. So for example, your weekly trash collection would very likely turn into a monthly trash collection. Your police department and your fire department would be decimated. I think many of the um, cities to which Mr. Jackowitz refers are not Pennsylvania municipalities. In Pennsylvania, each, each state has different laws that govern municipal bankruptcy. And we've seen what has happened in Pennsylvania in its capital, Harrisburg. And those are facts. There's no disputing that. But in addition, I have a newspaper article of my own about Stockton, California. And it's, the title of it is Walking for Redemption. After Stockton, California declared the largest municipal bankruptcy in the nation, its residents are fighting to stem a grim tide of violence. And it says, walking the streets in darkness where every block brings with it a tale of desperation, Rosalind Burst seeks some redemption for this city. These are the streets on the south side of Stockton where strands of police tape linger on fence posts for days like temporary grave markers. For the record, 70 people murdered this year. In these neighborhoods, living the fallout from the nation's largest municipal bankruptcy, 
Residents say there are no longer enough cops to hunt the killers or services to curb the violence. And what they have had to do is form their own neighborhood police groups to guard their own neighborhoods and their own parks. And later in the article, it notes Neighborhood Watch, the Stockton Police Department said more than 100 neighborhood watch groups are active in the city now, more than at any time in Stockton, Stockton's history. Some stand guard over their local parks at night. And there's a picture of the citizens doing just that. So if anyone wants to tell you that bankruptcy was the answer for the city of Scranton, it's nothing more than their opinion. And certainly you can take it or leave it. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Dave Paranis. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm just a little annoyed with Mr. Jack always coming up here every week, knocking this council down on the mayor. If it wasn't for you and the mayor getting together this year, I don't care how much everybody's saying you didn't get along. You did get along. If it wasn't for you not getting along, we would have like a 129% tax increase. I can't wait till you're gone and these same people come to this podium. Who are they going to blame then? They're probably going to blame you for the way the situation is in the present next year. They're going to blame it on you. I don't, I don't get it. They should be thanking you. If you went bankrupt, you fought to keep us out of bankruptcy. The taxes would be out of sight. People would be losing their homes if we filed bankruptcy. Where's the thanks for that? None. 22% tax increase. Where's the thanks for that? None. Just constant criticism. Look at Frank Joyce, the financial wizard. Before he was the financial chair, we had Judy Catelli. Every time they said, do you have any report this week? No. <laughs> Just breeze right by. We never knew anything. Without you, Mrs. Evans, during motions, we never knew anything that was going on in the city. When Kevin Murphy was president, there was, we never knew. This ordinance was passed, that ordinance was passed, number this, this, and this. But nobody knew what it was because nobody objected, nobody questioned, nobody had anything on the question. It was just passed. Everything was passed for the mayor because it was a council mayor. Nobody questioned anything, and the attorneys didn't, like Boyd Hughes does his research, and he explains everything. Takes forever sometimes, but he says everything, and the more he says, the, no, but Boyd, it takes a long time. <laughs> no, but, but I love listening to you. It's like a book. He does a very fine job yes, of he does. explaining very complex issues to the average person. Yeah. You've said in one week, but some solicitors don't say it in the whole year. But or in four years. Yes, but that's what I mean. You look forward to hearing from him because he tells the people what's going on in the city. And we've never heard this before. And this is with this council and this solicitor. We've never had this before. And when every time there's a vote, it's always on the question. There's always good debates. And this one has this point. We never had that before. We never knew, we were, people at home never knew what anybody was even voting on because nobody explained anything. But they're going to miss it when all of you are gone, most of you are gone, and they're not going to know anything that's going on. Because who knows what the, and they think that the council and the, and the mayor is going to get along. We'll wait, we'll, we'll see about that one. We'll just see about that one. And we'll just see if the mayor gets along and uh, gives the police and firemen everything they want. I mean, because the mayor doesn't usually turn over all the money to the firemen and the police, usually, but we'll see. Uh, I just think that people really have to start understanding what you've done for them and, and start appreciating it. But you'll be getting blamed next year, too, I'm sure. I don't know what else to say, except uh, people are going to be in for a rude awakening once you're gone. And I know you're still going to be doing all the hard work you're doing, even to the day you're not running anymore, right up to January, which is good. Uh, I don't know how you could do it considering you get no thanks. It wouldn't be me, but I give you credit and thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Craig? Five A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Thank you. Yes. 
Um, first, uh, it was announced this past week that uh, Brian McGowan, the current business administrator, would be leaving his post. Um, Mr. McGowan assumed that post at a very difficult time for the city, and during the, his tenure as business administrator, um, worked very diligently to provide funding for budgets um, and work towards the formation and implementation of the revised recovery plan. And I personally um, would like to thank him for his service to the city of Scranton. Um, secondly, uh, I know last week we received recommendations on the restaurants and food trucks and I, I I know it was a busy week with the uh, with the election and all. Um, uh, just basic two questions: um, Who is preparing the amendments for that legislation, and have we decided what those amendments would be? Um, actually, I'm going to address that okay. briefly under motions. That would be fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more on the, the rental registration uh, from last week, uh, kind of a follow-up. Um, I contacted um, Attorney Kelly, or I happened, actually, I happened to run into him um, here at City Hall during the past week, and I asked him about um, whether landlords were required to pay a mercantile tax, and whether LIPS through the rental registration through LIPS should be sending names to the single tax office. His response to me was that anyone who operates seven or more rental units is required to pay a mercantile tax. Uh, that and that those names should be sent to the single tax office so that that tax could be collected. Um, he asked me if I would have Mrs. Craig forward a letter to him requesting that he would send a letter to LIPS directing them to um, notify the single or to, you know, directing them to notify the single tax office of any um, people that. Um, fit that category and actually his recommendation was that rental registration or LIP should probably send the names of all landlords to the single tax office let them contact the landlords and then the landlords could kind of determine whether they should be paying the mercantile tax you know mm -hmm. that um, they would then um, respond to the single tax office so um, that's in the process, uh, and uh, hopefully that, you know, it's it just a, another small facet uh, of what the rental registration, sh you know, should be able to do. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, whether, I don't know that it will realize a great deal of revenue, but at least uh, it's another step towards an implementation of the rental registration ordinance and um, you know making it a workable um, workable law well, I think it's a very fine addition and thank you very much um, no, no problem uh, uh, also um, maybe a little bit of a status update from or f from Pell from the meetings with Pell a um, number of maybe two weeks ago I asked uh, Mr. Cross if they could if he would provide sort of a status update from their perspective on the recovery plan. And uh, that was, uh, he said that yes, they were in the process of preparing that and that it would be sent to the clerk's office. I don't know that we've received that uh, as, as of Monday, we, you know, we hadn't. And, uh, but that should be, that should be received relatively soon, at least we were told it would be. And one of the, one of the things that um, has been mentioned at the, the Pell meetings has, doing with, or has to do with the, uh, the commuter tax. 
and whether the city would be appealing to the courts again for commuter tax in 2014 and that this this status update would be kind of a, a step toward um, toward that process so that we could see where we are on the you know the budget the recovery plan and so on and um, it may be a step towards that appeal or um, appealing to the courts again so uh, again uh, I'm not sure where the administration is or what their plans are for um, looking at the commuter tax but Pell is preparing also to um, move forward if in fact um, the city is going to uh, apply or appeal for the commuter tax in 2014 and the last thing that I have uh, this evening was a gentleman here from uh, the University of Scranton uh, inquiring about legislation that was sent uh, dealing with the University of Scranton and HARB mm -hmm. and uh, I was just wondering if there was a, a if that if there was in fact legislation and if that was going to be on an agenda yes we'll have it placed on next week next week okay thank you very much you're welcome councilman rogan yes thank you um very briefly i would just like to thank um, the voters of scranton for their confidence in me in the election that just passed and i'd also like to uh, congratulate everyone who ran um, running for office is very difficult um, very time consuming and it's uh, worthwhile though um, and I would also like to thank everyone who came out uh, to vote and hopefully voter turnout will increase for the general election um, just two items tonight um, two motions um, I'd make a motion to amend item 7a per the following in the summary title after bridge insert and upon receipt the $21,400 shall be allocated for construction and paving in the 2013 operating budget, line item 01.080.00083.4340. And in the now therefore clause following project, insert and upon receipt, the $21,400 $21, shall be allocated to construction paving in the 2013 operating budget line item 01.080.00083.4340. We have Second. a motion. Oh, thank you. Anyone on the question? Yes, these were just um, the items I believe we discussed last week um, regarding the money the city is receiving um, from PennDOT from the sale of the land near the Harrison Avenue Bridge Project. Um, I brought up possibility of putting it towards road paving and everyone seemed to jump at the idea we certainly agree that roads need to be paved in the city and um, just a small amount of money but it's a it's a step in the right direction all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved I'd make a motion to amend item 7b per the following in the summary title after seven thousand dollars insert and upon receipt the $7,000 shall be allocated to construction paving in the 2013 operating budget, line item 01.080.00083.4340. And in the now therefore clause following $7,000, insert and upon receipt, the $7,000 shall be allocated to construction slash paving in the 2013 <coughs> operating budget, line item 01.080 point zero 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 eight three point four three four zero do we have a second second on the question I'd like to thank attorney Hughes and our office for drafting these amendments to tonight's legislation absolutely all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved and that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscombe, do you have comments or motions tonight? Uh, yes, just briefly. Uh, I too would like to congratulate the candidates who were victorious in this election and also congratulate those candidates who ran. And uh, at this point, we're not victorious, but I, I hope they would continue to 
uh, be civically active and uh, work towards their goals of, of helping the city, the county, the school district, or whatever, and, uh, you know, just keep going. Um, I would like to thank the voters who came out on election day. Although it wasn't a, a great turnout, there, there, there's a number of factors. Um, apathy could be one. Um, you know, possibly, possibly I think the ballot may have scared a lot of the uh, elderly people. You know, intimidating the fact that they, you know, they weren't sure what they were supposed to do or sign or when it was told it was two pages. Those are just my, my guesses. But uh, I would hope to see more voters turn out and, and get interested in, in the elections in the future. Again, I don't know what the answer is, but uh, hopefully it will work out. But uh, I'm looking forward to working with, with, with my new colleagues here. I will also miss my colleagues who will be leaving here at the end of this year. But uh, I would hope that they would continue to be in contact with me and, and continue to mentor me as they have too. Um, but that's, that's where I feel. So I, I would hope we can, uh, you know, continue with your ideas also. Uh, Mr. McGough mentioned Mr. McGowan. I, I too would like to uh, wish Mr. McGowan good luck on his new position. He did come in here, you know, in a time of uh, great financial strife. And, you know, whether you like a person or not, um, I really appreciate the work he has done. I had the opportunity during the uh, negotiations on the Supreme Court ruling uh, to spend day after day working with Mr. McGowan and other members of the administration to work with the police and fire and, and sort of, uh, you know, soften the blow to the citizens on that Supreme Court ruling. And, and I know they had worked tirelessly. Um, I had also been meeting with him at that time when we were in jeopardy of losing our Blue Cross and Blue Shield coverage. And uh, I was with him many times and we had conference calls and all. And probably the one that has spent the most time working with Mr. McGowan is my colleague, Mr. Joyce, being the finance chairman. So I know just in my experience um, working with Mr. McGowan that uh, he did work tirelessly. And, and I wish him good luck in the future. And, um, you know, hopefully everything will work out for him in that aspect. And lastly, uh, I, I was just curious about something I read in the paper this past week about uh, a meter program, Pango or something. They're supposed to, uh, it was just a blurb. I don't think anybody on council knew anything about no, that. I wasn't aware. But ironically, in this morning's paper, which I believe is related to it, I see this big ad. And we all know these ads aren't cheap. It says, next time you look for change, look for a change. Smart parking is coming to Scranton, launching May 28th. Stay tuned. I mean, this is, it I don't appears, know anything about I, I don't this. know anything either, but from, I didn't see today's newspaper article, but from the, or the advertisement, but from the previous article, it appears that um, this program is separate from the others, that it's yet like a third branch of the parking meter program. We're looking for uh, a company to manage the program. Then working with the manager would be um, a company providing the upgrades to the parking meters. And now to me, it's become. This seems to be someone else. Sure. It's entirely. becoming far more convoluted than we originally anticipated. Mm -hmm. We originally anticipated a company coming in, saving us money, showing us in real time the money that was coming in, and it, and it just doesn't seem to be happening. But I don't know why we're out of the loop, why this is being done unilaterally without any consultation. I believe it was us that, that brought it to the forefront mm -hmm. a couple of years ago about getting a meter system in here. That was part of, of, of the parking authority. They were notified years ago and kept ignoring it until they got themselves in such a spot that we had no choice but to, 
to let them. But, but it, it just seems like it's the same old, same old. And for some odd reason, uh, one of the companies, Street Smart, does the same thing. I mean, who is making these decisions to say, I, I believe the meters are still the cities. Yes. Not in the, in the hands of the parking garages. Who's making these decisions to let these people come in? And it just seems like they're trying to do an end around over the first company we brought here, Street Smart, which I don't care what company would run it, but let's do it right. Let's not be taking care of five different hands here. This is why we're in a position we're in. But this is continuous. And, and hopefully January 1st, this kind of nonsense stops. But uh, it just upsets me when I, when I, we're part of this project and we hear nothing about it. We read about it in the paper. And, and uh, this stuff has got to stop. Hopefully, whoever takes office in January will be a little more amenable to dialogue. Um, you know, we, we talk about communication with the administration and all that. Yes, there's times when we've had to work together, we do have communication. But it goes both ways. You know, they should let us know what their intents are. And, and that's what upsets me. And, uh, you know, in a way, I'm happy there's going to be a change in January. I'm just optimistic. Hopefully, I'm, I'm optimistic that the change is going to be for the better of everybody. Um, but we need the transparency, and it just seems that this whole parking debacle is, is being all arranged to avoid the transparency that we're looking for. And unfortunately, we had a speaker, I, I was absent last week, but two weeks ago, the gentleman came to the podium and he said, what are you there for? What is city council there for? You know, it was going through my mind because I ask myself the same questions time after time. What are we here for? The office downstairs continually thumbs their nose at us up here. They only use us when they need us. And I know my colleagues have worked hard with the administration to, to, to get us to a certain point here where we can survive. But you know, it's tough when we work hard, we take two steps forward and they kick us a step backward. This has been the MO for the time I've been on council here. Um, and again, I would direct that whoever the next mayor is, and, and I stated it before, you don't need a, a, a city council that's always agreeable to the mayor, you don't need one that's always at odds with the mayor. We're checks and balances. And I believe we're going to continue that role, no matter who's in there. We may disagree on things, we may, may agree on things. But it's, I believe we're working for the best interest of everybody. But when you look unilaterally come out with things without our, at least a conversation with anyone here, you're not working for the people of this city. Now there's four or five hands in this pot here. Let's, come on, Mayor. Let's, let's get straightened out here. I, I'm, a, I'm a bit disappointed that this stuff is continuing. And uh, again, like I said, I wonder sometimes what our purpose is here under this administration. We have to get a little bit, uh, little bit stronger. And I know, I, I mean, I'm not saying anything. I, I believe more than anything that uh, our president here has strived very hard to work cooperatively and to bring out issues that, that have been pushed aside that should have been brought to the forefront. And, uh, you know, I hope we can continue that without Mrs. Evans here, but um, I know I will. I will pursue the issues at that point. But, you know, times and things have to change. If we want cooperation, we have to cooperate all the way around. We don't have to cooperate just when, when he needs it or whoever is there needs it. And, you know, I know I ramble on, but that, that's my feelings. And, and when I saw this ad this morning, I'm curious as to who paid for this ad, because we all know how much an ad that size costs, and it's not cheap. There's no, no number here, but there's no other 
there's no other there's no identification yeah there's no identification on, on who it is but it does address smart parking coming to Scranton on May 28th I have no clue other than what I read in the paper the other day what's going on here so I don't know if we have any I mean do we have any say on, on what's happening with our meters um, shouldn't it have been presented to us for approval anyway I mean it's our liability too uh, at this point I can uh, tell you that our solicitor has been meeting with the administration I believe they met just today uh, regarding the selection of a parking meter management firm and I think um, you know obviously the bids came in and the administration reviewed the bids but still had questions concerning some of the proposals and uh, I think there was a, a phone conference conducted today with some of the um, some of the bidders to obtain answers to questions that the city had so uh, we do have I think an experienced authority uh, representing us in these uh, re in this review and these negotiations in our council solicitor sure and, and, and again I appreciate that definitely because I, I know uh, and, and I haven't had the time, I apologize, to really, I, I mean, I've reviewed the things and I do still have some questions, but I, you know, due to a, a work schedule that's been crazy, I haven't had the opportunity to really sit down with the administration at this point. So I do appreciate Mr. Hughes uh, working on that. But at the same token, <clears throat> I believe IPS was awarded the contract to do the free program, the 90-day thing which never came to fruition this is a totally different company according to the paper the other day mm -hmm. so I'm just curious as to you know who's making the decisions who's paying for these ads and uh, you know why it hasn't been a little bit more open and transparent because I do believe there's companies out there that bid that would be transparent and I do believe there's companies out there that bid that would work with whoever uh, awarded them the bid and, and keep things quiet because that's the way things have been around here for years and that's very disappointing so I'll be watching it carefully and uh, I'll be making my decisions which may not even be impact the situation anyway down the road and that's all I have to say thank you thank you and council councilman Joyce do you have any comments or motions yes very briefly tonight I'd like to begin by thanking all of the voters who came out uh, and applaud them for doing their civic duty. I'd also like to thank, I'd also like to congratulate the winners of the primary election for the Democratic and Republican nominations, even though some of those aren't decided yet. And I'd like to thank, again, the people that came out to vote and for the time that they spent out of their days choosing the elected officials they think would be best to serve the city of Scranton and also Lackawanna County. Um, <clears throat> a few matters of business. Uh, Mrs. Schumacher mentioned uh, that I get together with the new business administrator to uh, discuss where the city is financially being that we're nearing the halfway point of the year and I would be glad to do that. And there are some issues that need to be uh, brought up, such as the ice box and such as the towing and storage yard replacement. Speaking of the business administrator, as we all know, uh, Mr. McGowan will be moving on to a new position. I'd like to thank him for his service. I know that he did work tirelessly on a number of issues, and I know that the office, the BA's office is rather strained and a lot of times he put in a lot of extra effort and a scramble to get things done and I wish him nothing but the best in his new endeavor and I will be glad to work with Ms. Gina McAndrew uh, for the remainder of my term. While we're on the issue of the business administrator's office, just to give an update of where the city is financially, 
Uh, currently, we have $12.7 million in the bank and $205,000 in accounts payable. A few weeks ago, I um, addressed some issues with ATV complaints that we received over on uh, Dorothy Street and Parker Street. And we received a response back from uh, Chief Graziano and he states in regard to the complaints received regarding ATVs on Dorothy Street and Parker Street, the patrol division captain has been advised to have the patrol officers and the beat patrolmen monitor these locations for violations. So I'm sure that the uh, residents living in those areas will be pleased. Also, um, we've received um, a notification that bids will be opened up on Wednesday, May 29th for seasonal chemicals for swimming pools for the calendar year 2013. So once um, someone is selected, I'll further update on that matter. And for the uh, residents who use the West Granton Skate Park and also for the uh, West Granton High Park Neighborhood uh, Watch, I'd like to announce that uh, bids were opened on Friday, May 17th in City Council Chambers for the installation of, new f of a new fence for the Jackson Street Skate Park, which is sorely needed. And there are three bidders, and once uh, we receive progress on this issue, I'll further update everyone as well. And that's it. Thank you. Good evening. I'll be very brief tonight. The three ordinances related to the food trucks are not included in tonight's agenda. On Monday, I discussed the legislation with the mayor who wished to review the recommendations submitted by Ms. Collins and work with council on the final draft. Uh, the legislation for use of OECD re-refunds to operate two additional neighborhood pools this summer was not yet submitted to Council's office by the administration. It should be forthcoming soon. Finally, I was of the understanding that the city would be signing a contract with a company for the MBRO program this week. However, I've not received firm confirmation of that issue. The following companies bid on the installation of a new fence for the Jackson Street Skate Park Promax Fence System Incorporated, Able Fence, and Rutkowski Fencing Incorporated. DPW Director Mark Dewar is in the process of selecting the lowest responsible bidder. And thereafter, a contract will be awarded and the work should begin. I'm pleased to have supported this project together with the mayor for the children and youth of West Scranton. And finally, just a, a, a quick addition for Councilman McGough. I believe that um, it would be uh, the law department that would be drafting the amendments to the food truck ordinances with the input of our solicitor. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't know if like, anyone on council wanted to have any input on the recommendations uh, you know, before they went to law department mm -hmm. or um, and also if you wouldn't mind it I'll I would like to contact the uh, attorney Kelly mm -hmm. and uh, maybe sit down with him and um, discuss what we've talked about before he would frame those amendments it, Yes, and, and also, though, I would say... Um, and then, yes, also with... Yes, the I would use. keep our solicitor in that loop oh, because he, I think, would be uh, working on what council would like to see yes. in those amendments. But I think, by and large, um, most council members uh, intend to follow most of the recommendations right. provided by the businesses themselves. And I kind of feel like Ben Hur here, uh, with only with instead of having four horses, uh, there's there's five. And I, I think that that comment is, is good. I think that all council members should be involved in having comment on this. I know the other night, uh, Mrs. Evans and I discussed something, and um, we, we were discussing this legislation. 
And one thing that came up that I really do not believe is addressed, and I did mention it to Solicitor Kelly today, uh, is the fact that now that it's summertime and I hear the ice cream trucks going all around the neighborhoods, um, one thing that I think there should be an exception in this legislation for at least for ice cream trucks that move constantly and aren't in one position, mm -hmm. um, that's not addressed. I mean, I think they should pay a license. I think they should be inspected. I don't know if they currently are. Uh, but to operate within the city, I think there should be uniformity there, and that should happen. However, <laughs> they're extremely mobile. I mean, most of these food trucks and, and food carts, they're in one spot and stay there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that, that there should be an exception for the ice cream truck. That's just one thing that I did mention today. Uh, I think that's an entirely different situation. Um, and as I said at the last meeting, the one problem with this was was that this ordinance was, when it was adopted, I don't remember when or know when, um, was made for the uh, people to sell novelties at parades. And then everything was just grafted onto it uh, for food carts with the same hours and everything else. And I think that, that it has to be specifically tailored to these different types of businesses. Um, I mean, you take it, I don't know how many people know about it, but you know, what the fork, um, my wife told me, she saw it on TV in the morning uh, before she went to work, that you know, they're in competition now to be one of the top 10 food trucks in the United States. They're in a competition. I believe it's the same with the fork. I mean, that's what she yes. told me, but yes. they, they, I mean, this is, you know, the quality of, of what it is. Uh, how they got in it, I, I don't know anything about it. I, I've, I, I've never eaten at it or anything. I've never, I think I've seen it, but, you know, I mean, that's the, the type of thing that we're dealing with here, but I think everybody's input would be welcomed. Um, you know, take a look at what the chamber did, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, Leslie Collins did with the, you know, on behalf of the chamber, uh, you know, in getting the, the food vendors and the, uh, in the in, in the restaurants together and give me your comments and I, I think that you know we should we've come a long way from the piece of legislation that was submitted you know by the you know by the solicitor's office that prohibited food trucks within 500 feet of any business to pays a mercantile tax uh, I, I think we've come a long way but I think the best thing is that we have that, that we have a unified effort and have one piece of legislation will come down that doesn't have to be amended so I appreciate everybody's comments. Thank you. Mrs. Craig? Fifth order, no business at this time. Sixth order, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, file of council number 27, 2013, as amended authorizing and approving the right-of-way acquisition of a portion of city-owned property located on the 100 block of Harrison Avenue, 8,711 square feet in the city of Scranton to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation as per PennDOT's offer to purchase and summary of just compensation and to authorize the mayor and other appropriate city officials to enter into an agreement of sale to purchase said property for the sum of $21,400 for the purpose of removing the Harrison Avenue Bridge and replacing the Harrison Avenue Bridge. What is the recommendation oh. of the Chair for the Committee on Public Works? I recommend final passage of item 7A as a Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, file of council number 28, 2013, as amended, transferring a temporary construction agreement of city-owned property located in the 100 block of Harrison Avenue to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania 
Department of Transportation PennDOT for the construction of the removal of the Harrison Avenue Bridge and installation of a newly constructed Harrison Avenue Bridge for the sum of $7,000 and upon receipt, the $7,000 shall be allocated to construction paving in the 2013 operating budget line item 01080000834340. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Works? I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. 7C. For consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, file of Council Number 11, 2013, previously tabled. Amending file of the Council Number 74, 1993, as amended, entitled the Zoning Ordinance for the City of Scranton by repealing Section 516 entitled Flood Prone Areas and enacting, enacting Section 516 entitled Floodplain Management Regulations. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7C. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. Mrs. Evans, before we adjourn, I, I forgot one thing. Sure. Very quickly. Um, a property at 1006, I think it's 1006 Music Street, that will, um, vacant property that we've been asked about for years. Um, this past week, uh, Pat Hinton and the Southside Cleanup Project or group um, cleared that. Mr. Spindler, part of the group, uh, clearing that um, property, and I would just like to thank them for doing that. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much for that information. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.